train your cabin Read those books in a blink, oh yeah Grab yourself a hot drink cause you're watching how to train your Gavin Yep, that's me Hey guys, welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin Today I am doing my June TBR or as I like to call it, a video where I know nothing about the book, so try and watch me describe what they're about. How fun. So there's a lot of things happening in June. One of them is Pride Month, which I need to read more LGBTQ plus books, so I have a few on my TBR. And then we also have Make Your Myth Taker Readathon, which I am participating in. It is the entire month of June, and the idea is to sort of build a character, and you go through sort of reading prompts to kind of go towards your goal of being any kind of character you want. You could be a witch, you could be a goddess, you could be a fairy, you could be anything you want to be really. So I'm going to be taking part in that. It is hosted by Ashley at a Frog Through Fiction and Charlotte and I will leave their links in the description box as well so you can check them out as well as the announcement video because the announcement video is ah oh, sublime. That is the entire month of June but I'm going to be doing it in two weeks. Then in the final week of June I have things that I want to read and try and catch up on and stuff like that so let's see how we get on. So the first week of June I do want to be trying to read my LGBTQ plus books but there is a book that I have to have to read before June 6th because I am part of Read Rate Review which is a book club hosted by G a book roast and we have to read The City of Brass by S.A. Chakraborty, the Read Rate Review live show that is going to be happening on the 6th of June at 8pm I think. I will leave all of the information in the description box. This is why I'm terrible, I should have read this last month but I totally forgot about it so I'm putting it on June's TBR and I'm going to try and read it first, like straight away, try and get it out of the way so I can have it ready for the live show. All I know about this one is that it follows a young orphan called Nari and she summons a Jin warrior, I think, by accident. <laughs> this is set in Cairo, so I already love the idea of this setting. I've heard so many great things about it. So if I put this on my TBR first, I will definitely get it read. It is a bit chunky, writing's a bit small, but you know. So onto my LGBTQ plus reads. I will be reading The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is a recommendation from Trey, who has a channel called Fae Trey. I will link him down below as well. I have actually been wanting to read this for quite some time. I have Cersei, which I have not read yet either by Madeline Miller, but this comes highly recommended from Trey, so I really wanted to give it a try. And I, all I know about this is that it is kind of like a love story between Achilles and Patroclus? Patroclus? I'm terrible at pronouncing things. I'm gonna have to audiobook this one as well, otherwise I will not know how to say any of their names. I'm terrible. Again, that's all I know about it really. It's Achilles' story, I guess, told from Patroclus's point of view. Then I have two LGBTQ plus middle grade books that I've been dying to read. One of them has been out quite some time and the other one has just come out. So that is George and Rick by Alex Gino. So with George, when people look at George, they think they say a boy but actually George is a girl and she really wants to be Charlotte in the school play Charlotte's Web, but she doesn't know how about getting the role because everybody sees her as a boy. And then Rick is a young boy who is gay and he goes to middle school and he joins the Rainbow Spectrum Club, but he's figuring out his sexuality and yeah, again, I don't know much about them other than what I've just told you. So yeah, I need to read more LGBTQ plus middle grades, especially. And these two look absolutely perfect for it. The next book I want to read is Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Avaristo. So this won the Man Booker Prize Award last year, although they, for some stupid reason, allowed Margaret Atwood to win the award as well at the same time. That's never happened before, but they thought, hey, why not? You know, Margaret Atwood's already won one, so let's make her win the next one for a book that I don't even think had come out at that point and I didn't even really like The Testaments which is the other book that, were, that won the award so yeah I, I have some resentment over that but this is the true winner of the Man Booker Prize award is mainly about black British women and their lives their struggles so I'm also reading this for a book club with um, a few personal friends so I'm really excited to read that I have it on audiobook but I have just bought the paperback version of it so I'm just waiting for that to come and I have been told that there is LGBTQ plus rep in it as well. So on to the Make Your Myth Taker TBR then. I am going on the Jester path, so I'm going to be part of the Royal Court 
out. And I am starting off with the a fun middle grade prompt. So for that, I'm going to be reading Murder, Most and Later Like by Robin Stevens. This is about uh, two girls, Daisy and Hazel, who create this sort of detective agency at school. And one day they come across a dead teacher's body. And when they go to report it, the body disappears. So they have to sort of solve the case. And this is the middle grade monthly June pick for Mine and Jade's middle grade monthly book club. So I definitely need a reader for this. The live show for this will be at the end of June. And I'm excited to dive into it. It has beautiful blue spread edges. But I will leave the Twitter for middle grade monthly in the description box as well if you want to join in on reading this. The next prompt on the path is to read a book with royal colours on the cover and that is either red, purple or gold. <laughs> so for that one I will be reading The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slain Vampires by Grady Hendrix. There is red on the cover because there is blood coming out of these peaches. I think they're peaches. I absolutely loved My Best Friend's Exorcism by Grady Hendrix. I liked Horror Store but this one I have been so excited to read. Somebody has said this on Twitter that it is pretty much a bunch of Karen's slain vampires. So <laughs> that instantly makes me want to read it. Cody gifted me this recently as well. Thank you so much, Cody. But yeah, the main character is part of a book club. One of her neighbours gets mauled or something and then kids start going missing in the neighbourhood. And then I think maybe the book club kind of tries to solve the mystery and there's vampires in this. I will explain better in the wrap up, but this is one of my anticipated books, so so excited to read it. I'm really stretching it with the, the very small bits of red of the blood coming out there, aren't I? <laughs> the next part of the path is actually to read a book about books, but because it is yellow, you can sort of transport over to the monarch path, because the prompt for that is to read the highest rated. I'm assuming the highest rated on your Goodreads TBR, so I checked it out, and the one for that is Midnight Guardians by Ross Montgomery. This comes out in September, this is a proof, and it's been getting quite a bit of buzz on Twitter recently, so I'm kind of just wanting to jump in on that. This is set against the backdrop of World War II and the Blitz and it follows Carl whose imaginary friends from childhood come to life. So he is accompanied by his guardians, he has this six foot tiger, we have this badger in a waistcoat and a miniature knight and he has to go through war-torn Britain to save his sister or just war-torn London. Yeah blitz bombed London it says on the back there. See this is why I could never write a blurb. Oh but there, there is a terrifying midwinter king who is determined to bring an eternal darkness down over everything. Oh gosh, it sounds so good. And this is the highest rated on my Goodreads TBR, mainly because not many people have read it, so it's got a perfect five stars right now. Call me cheap, call me what you want, but I'm just playing by the technicalities of this game. And then on that Monarch path, the final book for the Monarch is to reread a favourite. And so I'm going to be reading House Moving Castle by Diana Wynne Jones. I read this last year and I absolutely loved it. And this is going to be the first book for Lexi's and Kaylin's new middle grade book club called A Touch of Whimsy, which I'm so excited to join in on. Their first book is going to be House Moving Castle, and I will link their channel down below as well as the announcement videos they did and their Twitter page. They are doing some kind of watch along as well for House Moving Castle, and it is about Sophie who becomes an old woman. She is cursed by the Witch of the Waste, and she ends up bumping into Howl, who is the most feared warlock in this town. I was a bit scared about their reread prompt, especially when I have so many books on my TBR that I haven't read for the first time, but at least I will be able to kill two birds with one storm with this one. And then I'm scooching on over to the sorcerer paths and I want to be a witch, because why not? So the first prompt on that is to read a book featuring an animal. So for that I'm going to be reading Dragon Mountain by <laughs> Katie and Kevin Sang. They're a married couple who write books together, like how beautiful is that? So this is an upcoming middle grade, this comes out in September as well. I'm trying to get through my art copies and I got this one recently from Simon & Schuster, so thank you so much for sending me this. I pestered the life out of them for this one. And they also sent some like top trump cards <laughs> as well for the dragons in the book. That's also pretty awesome. So I've heard this is a little bit like Percy Jackson-esque and it is about Billy Chan and he is sent to the middle of China where he goes to this like summer camp and there he meets some friends but then they come across some powerful warrior dragons which is where those top trump cards come from. They're hidden deep within a mountain behind the camp and there was this big war, this big dragon war and these children go on this adventure to the heart of the dragon realm. This will be the first 
book in the Dragon Realm series, so it sounds really promising. I love the whole scales on the cover and everything, so yeah, I really want to get through my art copy, so I thought this one would be a good one for this prompt, because dragons count as animals. It also would have worked for the next prompt, because the next prompt is to read a book with a file cover, and for that I'm reading The Unadoptables by Hannah Took, and I was supposed to read this months ago again. This was supposed to come out at the end of May, but it's been pushed back to July, so I really want to read it in June now, because, you know, read the art before it comes out. But this follows four orphans who, I believe, are, were abandoned under mysterious circumstances at this orphanage, or it might be five orphans four or five orphans they grow up together and there is this mysterious man after them now I believe is what happens but it is Victorian-esque so I'm looking forward to reading it eventually because I do want to read this before it comes out again but yeah I keep putting this on my TBRs and never reading it so if I put it in an official path I have to read it so the next prompt to be a witch is to read a book featuring a magic battle and I'm going to be reading The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson this is the first book in the Mistborn trilogy and I stupidly said I wanted to read this during a live show, a drunk live show with Becca and Ashley. If <laughs> somebody bought me it, and Becca did, Becca bought me it. <laughs> oh God, like it's, it's chunky. And the writing, the writing, oh the writing. And I know pretty much nothing about it other than it has a magic battle in it. The Scar was slaved in misery, lived in fear for a thousand years. The Lord Ruler reigned with absolute power and ultimate terror. Yet somehow hope survives a new kind of uprising that being planned that depends on the cunning of a brilliant criminal mastermind and the courage of an unlikely heroine, a scar street urchin, and must learn to master alimency, the power of the Mistborn. Sounds good. It does sound good. It's going to be a struggle because it's huge. <laughs> and then finally I have to read a book with occult themes and for that I'm reading The Merry Begotten by Julie Hearn. Look at the cover, look at that beautiful cover. This is set in a remote west country village where there are rumours of black magic and witchcraft. Everyone seems to be blaming this girl called Nell and there is a witch finder general on the way to this village. So I think this is going to be a kind of race against time with occult themes, <laughs> fortunately. This one is highly recommended from Michelle Harrison. So I'm looking forward to picking this one up. I just absolutely love the cover for one. I mean, oh my God. Oh my God. So in the last week of June, I want to try and read New Moon by Stephanie Meyer. I've never read this one before. I reread Twilight a few weeks back. It was an experience. So I want to try and continue the series, hopefully before Midnight Sun comes out. I don't know why. I genuinely don't know why I want to do this to myself. But yeah, this follows Bella who goes to Forks and she, there she meets the Cullen family and they're a family of vampires that sparkle in the sun. This is book two. I really don't like the movie. So I know I'm not going to have the best time with this one, but at the same time, I guiltily enjoyed reading Twilight. So hopefully this is still a bit of a guilty pleasure read for me. We'll see. And then for Le Guin Along, I need to read the third book in the Earthsea Cycle series. So that is The Father Show by Ursula K. Le Guin. And the live show for this one, I think, will be sometime at the start of July. And it will be discussing the second and third book. This is the third book. I've read the second book. So this one, I don't know what this one is about. I just know that the Earthsea Cycle is set in this kind of weird world where there's loads of islands and there are wizards. <laughs> this one sounds like it's going to be set mainly on the sea. I mean, there's also a ship on the cover as well. I haven't been the biggest fan of this series so far. I just not gelling with it that much. I'm still going to read it for Le Guin Along, so hopefully it's better than the first and second book. Hopefully. And since I've been reading a volume a month, I want to read volume four of Saga. So this is the compendium. It's by Brian K. Vaughan and Fiona Staples. I have been loving this series and I'm reading yet one volume a month, which I kind of feel like I could do way more, but I'm just savouring the flavour, you know? This is sci-fi. It's set among multiple worlds and planets in this big universe. We follow multiple characters, mainly a couple who are different species who have had a baby and they're running away from different forces that want to kill them. It's been really, really good, really exciting. I'm loving it. So volume four is the next volume I need to read. I know there isn't anything else after this as well until it comes back from hiatus. So I'm kind of just, yeah, I'm taking my time with it. Before I go as well, there are a couple of readathons I want to shout out as well. There is Detectathon by Mind of Molly, which is running from June 15th to June 28th. And the group book for that is Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World by Ashley Herring Blake. This is about a girl who has been drawing pictures of girls holding other girls' hands 
and I think this notebook was missing and she tries to sort of hide her sexuality, her identity. But this is middle grade so I'm so excited for it. If I can try and fit in any of the other Detectathon prompts I will. There's also Not Safe for Workathon being hosted by Paige from Pages with Paige and that readathon is running from June 1st to June 30th. The prompts for that is absolutely hilarious. Please check out Paige's announcement video I'll put it in the description box. Just for example there is a prompt called Deep Throating. Read a book that has issues that are hard to swallow. <laughs> Blue Balls as well, read a book with a massive cliffhanger. I mean, come on. <laughs> and this prompt is one that I, I'm sure I would recommended this prompt. And that is Blue Waffle, read a book with a blue cover. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so for the last half of this, I want to try and fit these books into Not Safe for Workathon. So the first prompt is shit. Read a five star prediction and hope it is the shit. So for that, I'm going to try and fit in the Southern Book Club's Guide to Saving Vampires by Grady Hendrix in that one because I predict this to be five star. I love Grady Hendrix and this sounds so good. The next prompt is Blue Balls, read a book with a massive cliffhanger, but I'm not too sure what book has a massive cliffhanger. So I'm going to leave that one for now and then hope one of them has a cliffhanger. Maybe The Final Empire, maybe this ends on a cliffhanger, let me know. And then the next prompt is Deep Throating. Read a book that deals with hard to swallow topic matters. <laughs> but that may be Ivy Aberdeen's uh, To The World, maybe, with LGBTQ plus themes. I mean, it's not hard to swallow for me because I'm a gay man, but for other people it is, so I'm, I'm going to include this one for that one. Uh, the next one is Edging. Start a book on June 1st and not finish it until June 30th. So like, say, this, this is why this readathon is genius. Oh, gosh, what? Okay. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the first page, couple of pages of Saga Volume 4, maybe the first, like, issue in that, and then not finish it off until June 30th. How's about that? <laughs> The next prompt is Soggy Biscuit to read a book featuring multiple point of views. <laughs> I genuinely don't know what has multiple point of views. Does any of these have multiple point of views? I don't know if this has multiple point of views, but I'm putting it most in ladylike. It follows Daisy and Hazel, so maybe it goes back and forth between their point of views. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if not. Blue Waffle, read a book with a blue cover. Midnight Guardians, Ross Montgomery. Lemon Steel and Whore, read a book that features food or is from a new to you author. Well, I mean, I could have used the the guide to vampires for that one. Well, Alex Gino is a new to me author, so porn, read an ebook. I can't read ebooks. The, the, the eyes just don't like screens too much. I'm gonna have to skip that one, I'm afraid. Quickie, read a book under 200 pages. Okay, George has um, just a little over 200 pages, but I think that's including Front Matter. It starts on page seven. Aftercare, pair a book with self-care. AJ, read a book in the bath, do a face mask, drink your favourite beverage. So I will. I, you've seen me read a book in the bath before in one of my believe -a vlogs, so I can do that. There's an extra challenge to read only blue books, but I mean, that's not happening now, is it? <laughs> yeah, those are the readathons I want to partake in. Them are all the books that I want to read. Like hell, am I picking them up again? There are 17 books on my TBR. Let's see how I do. So thank you so much for watching I really appreciate it if you enjoyed leave a little like and subscribe if you haven't already leave a comment let me know what you're reading in June if you're partaking in any readathons and I will see you in the next video bye